indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you again uh, for the blessings of the day. We thank you for the blessing of life. We pray uh, for this country, our leaders, that you would give them divine wisdom at this time. We pray for uh, those that are being affected by this pandemic. We pray that you would help them, the families that are grieving today, give them comfort and grace in their time of loss. We pray for our state, our leaders, all of those at the local level that are working so hard in preparation, uh, those on the front lines, our healthcare workers, our health departments, our EMTs, our fire departments, our law enforcement, our hospitals, um, the nursing homes, those that are working, anyone working in healthcare today, caring for the most vulnerable, we pray that you would help them, give them strength, give them stamina, during this time for their working long hours, and we pray that you would just keep them safe is our prayer. Uh, remember our county, remember our citizens, and we'll give you all the glory, and we ask it all in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, Mike. We'll do the uh, legislative portion of our meeting first, of course, so we'll open that up with the approval of the minutes of March 31st. Uh, so moved. Second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of accepting miscellaneous notices and reports. Any questions or comments in regards to item two on the agenda? Hearing none. Make a motion to accept. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of request for appropriation of funds. Questions or comments in regards to the fund appropriations? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Mr. Cashman? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. And the matter request for appropriation transfer of funds? Any questions or comments in regards to the fund transfers? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Cratchit? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of approving payment of the regular schedule of accounts for the various funds, moral obligations, Questions or comments in regards to the various funds, docket, then and nows, and morals? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of reappointment to the Portsmouth Public Library Board? Any questions or comments in regards to item six? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of authorizing the clerk to advertise a notice to bidders for Sida County's various rooms, this year 2021 Garter Up Project for the Sida County Engineering Department. Any questions or comments in regards to item 7? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of authorizing the clerk to advertise a notice to bidders, Questions or comments in regards to item eight? Hearing none. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of service contract between the Sider County Commissioners for Sider County Economic Development, communication incorporated. Questions or comments in regards to the Lucas communication contract? Hearing none. Motion to approve. I'll second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Okay. All righty. Um, Ms. Coleman, would you have anything in addition this morning? I have nothing at this time. Okay. Mr. Crabtree. No, I have nothing. Okay. All right. Appreciate everybody coming today um, to give a description of what the room is like. I know our governor has been doing that, and that I think that le lets everybody know, gives everybody a little bit of ease as far as what our setup is here in the room. Um, we have limited public access at this time, but we're on Facebook and we are on um, YouTube. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. I believe that's right. We're streaming it after 
we have the meeting. Uh, we're not live yet on YouTube, but we got to get so many followers. I think there's a criteria there. So, anyways, um, as that you can see, we're separated quite well here. We also have some uh, visitors today, and I want to say how much I appreciate this. There's, I think there's eight people in the room, and we have a very large room now, very large meeting room, as opposed to the. Uh, cracker box that we used to have downstairs, uh, which we would never have been able to do this. Hindsight's 2020, but we would not have been able to do what we do now if we were still in that meeting room downstairs, come to think of it. So, but anyways, um, we have some great, wonderful guests that are with us today, and I really appreciate you all coming. Um, there's, there's a lot of citizens asking questions, wondering what's going on, and uh, um, with us today we have Dr. Michael Martin. Of course, he is the health care commissioner of Soda County. We have Belinda Leslie as well. Uh, she is the interim administrator for the Portsmouth City Health Department. Did I get that right? Yes, okay. And then we have the deputy director of Soda EMA and Larry Mullins with us today. And uh, we appreciate all the hard work. If everybody knew how many hours uh, that these individuals are spending and, and have spent and are still spending, uh, in preparation um, to getting our county ready for any potential surge, as well as uh, just making sure all of our health care providers are ready uh, and are protecting themselves currently. Um, it, it is a, a major task, a major undertaking, and if we were talking about this three months ago, no one would have even dreamt that we would be where we are today. Uh, I was careful in how I said that because Two months ago would probably be about the time this was starting to be talked about, and of course over a month ago really starting to ramp up. So, um, but no, we appreciate them, and of course um, we would want to open up the, the floor to questions from the press at this time, and Brian is watching that, and it looks like he may have some questions for us. Yes. Okay. Do you know if it's healthcare related specifically, or? I'm trying to read through them to, to discern that. Okay. Um, I do have one from Mr. Schultz. Um, he's wondering if you guys have any other directors. Okay, that's the soda voice, uh, Bill Shope. Okay, for the first question, um, I know that um, interim, or not interim, Deputy Director Mullins was very involved. I'm going to ask him to come up. And anyone else that want to comment on that, um, you, you all, but I know Larry was very involved uh, in that um, with the ONG on the ground. So, uh, Larry, take it away. Uh, last week, uh, by the request of uh, FEMA, uh, the site of County EMA, uh, with our health care partners, identified uh, several locations here in Scioto County that uh, could be uh, what they call an alternative care site. And basically these sites are for people that would not have uh, the symptoms of the virus but would have other medical uh, conditions and have, need some level of uh, medical care. Uh, we uh, showed uh, basically the uh, Army Corps of Engineers and the Ohio National Guard, the assessment team, uh, several different locations. Uh, one was the uh, site owned by the Scioto County uh, Career Technical Center north of uh, Lucasville. And then the second one was Shawnee State University. Uh, they did a very thorough job. I mean, everything from checking the electrical capacity, the sewage, the water, the thickness of the concrete in the uh, buildings. Um, it uh, was an all-day event. Uh, at the end of it, uh, right now, uh, and Dr. Martin probably can speak to this better than me, uh, it looks like our surge capacity will be contained within our hospitals uh, since the, um, we've done a good job flattening the curve here in Scioto County and uh, the spread. Um, so uh, the hospital's been cleared out just as in preparation uh, per the uh, ODH uh, guidelines and it looks like we're not going to need an alternative care site here. Uh, the governor has identified I think seven. Most of those are located uh, Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, 
uh, Dayton, Youngstown, Toledo areas. Um, but other than that, uh, right now, I think uh, with our permanent, you know, our anticipated needs, uh, we're looking at uh, not opening up an ACS uh, here in Scioto County. And maybe Dr. Martin can expand on that, maybe. <laughs> That was, spot, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, Larry. That was pretty good, Larry, actually. <laughs> it's hard to Good. expand on perfection there. Yeah. That was an excellent job. But no, the hospital uh, has uh, lots of uh, beds right now, so they are preparing for this. Uh, they're moving ICU uh, rooms around a little bit uh, so that they're ready for this uh, surge. And again, as the governor and everyone's looked at this, uh, it looks like that can all be contained within the hospital at this moment. But they're always looking on, looking at other options too. Uh, Dr. Martin, how would the regional aspect, um, since SUMC is more of a regional hospital, yeah. um, so we really can't just look at Soda County here. Uh, SMC, well, SUMC can't. They have to look at multiple counties because there's only so many hospitals in Southern Ohio, especially in our region, that have ICU beds. Mm -hmm. um, how are they preparing for that since it's not just Soda County? Right. Um, well, I'm not a spokesman for, for sure. uh, <laughs> the hospital, but they do have Region 7 uh, is what, what region we're in, and they are discussing bed situations with all those hospitals, which include Adena, uh, Oblenis, Holzer. Uh, Holzer, all those, and they're all kind of pooling that information together and reporting that to the state on a weekly basis about bed availability. And right now, bed availability is pretty good in this area. I think there's more than 50% of beds are available. So they have done a very good job of keeping people out of the hospital in preparation for this. Good deal, good deal. Okay, all right. Um, the second part of that question, you might just want to hang loose. So <laughs> you might get asked more. Um, and then I'm sure, Belinda, you'll, you'll, you'll get your chance to chime in here too. Um, the second part of the question was, read it again if you would, Brian. What impact will the loss of sales tax and other revenues have on the county? That is a very interesting question. Um, you know, one thing about it, it's not just uh, Soda County that has major concerns about that, but also, of course, um, the city, uh, Portsmouth City, as well as uh, the villages, the townships. Um, there, there's going to there's going to be an impact. Um, with the loss of, of sales tax revenue. No doubt there's going to be a significant loss of income tax as a result of this. So there's going to be a, a period of time. There's going to be a bump. There really is. And actually, it's going to be more of a valley than a bump um, where revenues have, have declined. Um, we have talked uh, with, uh, I, I spoke with the treasurer this morning. We've spoken with the auditor, the county auditor and county uh, treasurer, uh, I would I would ask the press to speak to Portsmouth City. You know, maybe maybe Trent Williams, somebody like that, could comment more on what their anticipated loss is or their the impact that they're going to feel. But uh, uh, as for us, um, a couple of things. Uh, yes, we're going we're going to feel we're going to feel an impact on this. Um, how great of an impact? Very hard to calculate right now. Um, our, our revenue comes in, sales tax revenue comes in usually about three months later after it's realized. So we're not really going to know about March until June. Um, so when we're reporting sales tax revenue right now in our meetings, we literally just reported January. So we're not going to feel it, um, the impact of that until March, and it really is anybody's guess. Um, Commissioner um, Crabtree, you made a great comment this morning uh, during some, we, had, we was just talking back and forth about this and, and um, you made a great observation about people are buying stuff online uh, where they aren't going to the stores so much. We know what the impact has been on the retailers. We know how uh, crazy it's been at Walmart and Kroger's and some of the other stores. I, you know, over the weekend Lowe's was absolutely insane, I guess. Um, but a lot of the items that are being bought right now are food items and paper items, which are not taxable. So, uh, but people are still buying online things that are taxable. So uh, that even adds to the um, 
whether or not we're going to see a, a giant dip or not. We're, we're not 100% sure. We feel like there's going to be something. Now, uh, in, in addition to that, though, and here's, here's the, the good news. That was all the bad news, okay? But here's the good news. Um, one of the things that our jobs as commissioners is we're responsible for the general fund and we're responsible for making sure that revenues are available in case of a catastrophic event. That, that's something we're always looking at. That's something we're always gauging. If someone had told us that um, six months ago or a year ago that we would be facing a pandemic, we probably, well, I can, I can even tell you that as far as our threat assessment, and Larry, you, you know this, and our threat assessment through EMA, uh, infectious disease was very low on that list. It was not something that we thought would be um, an imminent event. Hindsight's 2020. And of course, that threat assessment's being reevaluated right now. But, you know, we, we, we look at threats like spring storms tornadoes, significant wind events, snowstorms, things that we know happen around here regularly, landslides, um, you name it. But those are the things that are part of those meetings. But the commissioners, and, and this was started years ago, and, and Mike was very much involved with this, and, and, and I'm sure you're going to, I want you to comment on this, both of you, but we, you know, this is why our carryovers and our rainy day fund is so important. Um, we're going to weather this better than a lot of counties. We really are because as long as it's not prolonged, if it's prolonged, then it, it could significantly impact us. We don't think it's going to be prolonged to the point to where it's going to be a, um, a prolonged economic event. Hopefully that's the case. Prayerfully that'll be the case. But we, we prepared and we have reserves and because of that, uh, Sayota County is going to be able to remain strong fiscally, but we are going to see a dip and uh, we're going to have to take measures internally to make sure that, that that dip doesn't impact us to the point to where it cripples us. So we're going to have to really look hard. We're going to have to tighten our belt now. We have already and um, we're going to have to make sure that when we come out of this and we will, uh, we're still going to be a very strong county fiscally. So with that, Mr. Crabtree, would you have anything you'd like to add? Well, only that uh, from some of the things we've seen on the, the meeting with the Bill Johnson yesterday, uh, it, was a, it was basically a televised meeting, but uh, uh, there may be funding available to offset uh, some of our losses due to the coronavirus thing. Uh, the bigger counties of 200,000 population and more will be able to apply for funding through the federal government. Uh, anything less than 200,000 will have the opportunity to apply for some of the impact of this uh, through the state of Ohio. So there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You know, this is going to be so devastating that uh, how much we can count on or whether it will be uh, you know, uh, the entire amount or, a, or, or maybe a percentage of what we law, lose over this, uh, uh, something will be done. So, you know, we just got to be constantly aware that, you know, working at a zero balance in our general fund is not, to me, is not an option, uh, never has been. And, uh, you know, when Doug and I took over back in the day, we started out with a several million dollar deficit and we got to where we are today uh, by being very conservative and, and uh, with something like this you can see how important that was and, and still is. So, you know, you, you can't predict the future, you never can, uh, but you've got to be prepared for anything that might hit. And we worked very hard to get where we are today. and. And uh, we aim to keep the county uh, solid financially throughout this uh, epidemic. And, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can. And it's, it's going to be hard on, on us. It's going to be harder on a lot of the other rural counties. But, uh, but we're all going to make it. And, uh, you know, we need to try to work together to make sure that uh, 
you know, it's it's least devastating, and and we I think we've pretty much prepared for that. So, with that, I'll okay. yield to. <clears throat> Kathy. The only thing I might add is that um, <clears throat> when we were in fiscal emergency and we came out of that, we continued, um, and I thank you and the past commissioners for that. We continued to. Um, work within that gui the guidelines when we were in fiscal emergency. So that has helped us. And we've not, we've been very frugal. We haven't been extravagant. And there are, we've been questioned many times, you know, why don't you use this money for this or, or that? And of course, as Brian said, who would have dreamed what we'd be facing, what we're facing now? But um, that is the reason we make the choices and decisions we do to protect uh, the, um, the county uh, from anything, but um, most importantly, something of this nature. Right. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Question number three. <coughs> uh, hmm. This is a chief part question also from Rose Mallory. Uh, okay. Is there a plan to do anything about uh, people disregarding the stay at home order or the businesses not adhering to? Um, boy, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> um, of course, we know what the stay-at-home orders are. Um, we have encouraged people to follow the stay-at-home orders. Um, that is really a law enforcement question. I, I really appreciate the post that we saw over the weekend from our prosecutor. Um, asking people to please abide by the, the stay-at-home order because with this, you know, when you're not, you're putting not just yourself at risk, but you could potentially be putting someone else at risk. Um, and specifically, he, you know, he was talking about law enforcement. Don't, don't, don't cause a burden on law enforcement to have to enforce it because they can within the scope of the director's orders, the governor's orders, they can enforce it. Don't force them to be taken away from other more serious matters, um, car wrecks, um, responding um, to, you know, God forbid some kind of a, a crime that's occurring that's, that's really, really bad. Um, don't force them to be taken away from those things. There's only so many officers, there's only so many people, there's only so many hours uh, in the day. And, and that's what we're asking is that everybody abide by those for your own benefit um, and for the benefit of the public as a whole. Um, I will tell you my, my own um, habits have changed greatly. When I get home in the evening, I stay home, you know, I, we, we, we've been watching movies and playing board games and, and actually it's been refreshing. It really has. It just kind of reminds me of being on vacation in a way. Um, but we also know that, that we have those that are essential are working just like we are here today. And those, there are those that don't have that benefit, but, but they've been deemed essential. Uh, but we, we, we ask that parents be responsible for your children. Uh, don't don't allow your children to go out and be exposed un, uh, needlessly, just needlessly. I, 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 I saw some kids just the other day, and I'll, I'll share an experience I saw. I went through the Scioto River to pick up my takeout dinner. That was a, a free advertising, I guess, for Scioto River. But anyways, um, but as I was pulling out, I saw some young teenagers, and they were hugging it out and everything else. And I'm like, where's the adults? We need adults to step in and to to be mindful of where your children are and what they're doing and educate your children um, on the importance of staying socially distant you know air air five works just fine you know and and um, we know it's hard we are a uh, typically an affectionate society in southern ohio we love to hug and and uh, love on our neighbors and our friends but right now we can't do that. We shouldn't do that. And until this uh, pandemic is over and the health officials tell us it's safe to do so, we need to refrain. 
So I, I don't know if that really answered the question wholly. Um, we're leaving that in the hands of law enforcement and our, our prosecutors, as far as the city goes, same thing, and our solicitor, um, and those on the front lines of law enforcement. That's for them to determine. But I would pray that if there's a big group of people socializing or playing basketball, ten on, you know, five on five or what, break it up. They need to break it up because we, we are in a position where uh, right now, especially in Soda County, as Larry mentioned, we are being successful in flattening the curve to this point. But too many of those kind of events where there's a lot of people congregated together could have exponential um, terrible results if, if we're not if we're not careful. So um, that's what I'll say. I don't, I don't know if either one of you have anything to add. I just know that the <clears throat> earlier meetings that we attended, <clears throat> the EMA, and Larry might add, <clears throat> add to this that they have discussed this and they are prepared for this. Mm -hmm. They are yes. Um, the judges. This is this has been discussed uh, legally and. God forbid we have to do it, but there is a process to do so. Well, people need to remember that uh, county government is just an arm of state government, and we don't make laws. Uh, our legislators make laws, and the governor can issue executive orders, and then it's up to the law enforcement to actually enforce that. We're not a, an enforcement agency. We are a fiscal agency within the county, and and uh, we do what we can and we can encourage people to do things and we can adopt resolutions but when it comes to laws we can't we can't make another law to to prevent that now there you know there's uh 88 counties there are two uh counties that are council form of government that's cuyahoga and summit county and they have uh certain powers that we don't have as uh, as commissioners but uh, basically, if there's anybody that uh, are violating any of the stay-at-home orders, uh, depending on where this goes, uh, they could potentially face uh, fines or, or some kind of punishment for that. So. you three <laughs> so we'll let you we'll let you all chime in I, I I mean I'll just simply say it's a bit invaluable it's priceless but go right ahead um, basically uh, the job of uh, Sayota County EMA is to plan for the worst case scenarios and pray for the best outcomes and uh, so we are constantly with our uh, partners and the uh, local emergency planning committee uh, constantly drilling uh, and we do have a county plan that's revised. In fact, uh, um, Belinda's been working on updating our plan and uh, infectious disease is a big section in that as are just about everything else that ha could happen here, including chemical spills or floods or uh, snowstorms or ice storms. Uh, so kind of uh, fortunate in a way so much has happened uh, under the tenure of our director, uh, Kim Carver, um, since 1987. Uh, she's seen everything from three feet of snow uh, to um, ice storms, the prison riot. Uh, I mean, it's just- High river flooding. Yeah, it's just yeah. endless, the flash flooding, the backwater flooding. So we're constantly uh, meeting uh, on a quarterly basis with uh, probably about two dozen of uh, the uh, people from law enforcement, fire, EMS, our medical uh, services, our health departments, our hospitals, uh, people from the prisons, uh, the social service agencies uh, like your Salvation Army, the Red Cross, all sitting at a table every quarter and uh, basically 
pushing out plans and preparing for the worst case scenario. So uh, that's our job and uh, we uh, are proud to try to protect the citizens of Scioto County. Great, great. Thank you. Linda and Mike, would you have anything? Okay, all right. <laughs> Uh, Mark Craycraft, on the agenda, who is Lucas Communications, when was the contract made available for bids, what was the amount of the awarded contract, what was the need to cause the commissioner to seek assistance? Okay, we'll take one at a time there. Okay, what was the first one? Um, who is Lucas Communications? Okay, Lucas Communications is a company out of Ironton. Um, when did we start? Was it two years ago? Yes. The, was that the second question, the need? Uh, when was the contract made available for bids? Okay. The, um, it, there has been no bidding for that contract to date. Um, it's lower than the threshold that you have to put it out. Um, go ahead. What was the amount of the awarded contract? Uh, it's it's 5000 quarterly is what the amount is. Uh, for social media services in the amount of 5,000 per quarter for the period of April 1st through March 31st, 2021. Uh, what was the need to cause the commissioners to see assistance? Oh, the, that, that's easy. Two years, was it two years ago? It's been two years now. Um, one of the things that we, we noticed was, uh, well, first of all, the technologies increased so much. And in order to get our message out, to be able to talk to the public in a more, just like we are today, um, we thought we needed, we need to do something on social media. And uh, even though we had, and, and still have, we have newspapers, we have radio <coughs> that come to our meetings uh, normally, okay, they're usually here, but they're watching this morning, I'm sure, um, that ask questions. There's just something to be said about being able to see someone and to be able to see the reactions um, and to get the whole story. It is very hard um, for radio especially because you, you got to do something like a 30 second sound bite to tell a story. But Sam McKibben and, and others in radio, they do a great job, you know, they really do. But it's hard to get a, an entire story out in 30 seconds. Um, newspaper. My goodness, could you imagine printing everything that's been said here today already? Um, unfortunately, our clerk gets to type that out after this, and she's probably already thinking about that. But uh, because everything's on record, but uh, we uh, we felt that it was good uh, for us to talk to the citizens directly. So, so it, it it was it was something that because of we've been able to actually tell people you know, and refer them to the meetings. Uh, we're on uh, Facebook. We're on YouTube. Um, believe it or not, we actually have a Twitter page. It's not even used. <laughs> and, and Instagram, because no one's really figured it out yet, but those are part of the services. Um, and we're always constantly looking for ways to push the word out, get the news out, and share that. Uh, one thing about the page is it not just covers our meetings, but it covers all announcements. Anything going on, and especially right now, uh, the commissioner's Facebook page is just uh, riddled with information. Um, and we're able to communicate with the public quickly. We meet twice a week. Uh, right now we're meeting once a week because of the COVID issues. But when you only meet twice a week, which actually is the most of any government body in Scioto County, um, there's, there's a Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday that you don't get to communicate. Uh, directly with all the public. That access isn't always there. Where with this, it is. And um, we're able to share information with the, the public. We're able to share what uh, the EMA is putting out and what the Portsmouth City Health Department, I, I, I shared off your site and I've shared off the county's uh, health department site. And, and there's other admins that, that, that share information. So it was a positive change it really was um, we've had so many comments and a matter of fact I, I noticed the other day that in the last 30 days 127,000 views on our Facebook page in the last no 28 days for some reason they do 28 days 
but in the last 28 days, 127,000. So people are going there for information. They're, they're looking for information. And if you notice, the only thing that's shared on there is factual information that comes from a reliable source. And uh, so we, we recommend people go there, and, and they are. There's over 5,000. Some people follow the page. Others hit the page all the time. So uh, that was the need. Mike, do you have anything? Well, it, basically, it's just all about transparency. Uh, there you go. Our meetings are all open. They always have been open to the public. Um, and uh, if, if anyone has any questions, they come to our meetings. They, you know, they're free to ask questions and, uh, on things that they don't understand. Uh, but everything that we do is, uh, is pretty much uh, open to the public. And uh, another thing, too, that, uh, that a lot of people aren't aware of is the fact that all of the offices, if you do business with any of the offices in, in the county, and you want some information, whether you want deeds or, or uh, tax information or anything you want to do, most of your elected officials are very eager to help, uh, help you with that information. And, uh, you know, people need to know that the courthouse is here to serve everybody in Sioux County. So whatever your needs may be, if it's not available online, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, been a surveyor, I've worked uh, with people in the county, in the auditor's office, in the recorder's office, and even sometimes in the clerk of court's office. And uh, no matter what I was dealing with, it's always been very easy to get anything from, uh, from your uh, elected officials in the courthouse. So just remember, if it's not online, you know, that's a part of our transparency. Uh, if it's not available online, uh, you're always free to come into the offices. Of course, right now we're kind of shut down because of COVID-19, but uh, for the most part, if you have some serious or some uh, pretty important uh, uh, business that you have to deal with the county, I think you can make appointments and you can probably get in to see somebody. So, yes. Okay. Just the point that they've made is well taken and, and is invaluable during this pandemic and, and we are thankful for that. But a couple years ago when we first um, uh, gave the contract to Lucas, there, there was also a, a lot of negative uh, press about Sioux County and with the opiate situation, and it was another way to bring positive and good things to the public that's, as that's well. A good point. And yeah. so, with you know now, now with this situation, I, I don't know what we would do without it. But um, grateful that it is a service that we uh, have taken advantage of. That's a good point. Um, a lot of times, sometimes I. I well, we've been told this, that, um, and, and Southern Ohioans aren't like this at all, Sioux Countyans aren't like this at all, but uh, we, we typically don't like to toot our own horn, you know, but, but we've had people say, why don't you toot your own horn more often? Because if you tell people positive things are going on, then perhaps public perception would be more positive. So that, that's exactly one reason we did it, is because trying to get the good message out there the good, the good, neat stories out there. Like, and I'll just give you an example. And, and I was so happy to see this. This is a face shield that's being made at SOMC. This, this, this face shield that you can literally wear just like that. They're making these. They've made like 3,000 of them up at SOMC already. And all these materials were, were bought and purchased um, locally. And then the cord comes from Soul Choice, which made the cord. So it's, it's, they're, they're, the, this is a good story. This is a neat story. I was going to share this with everybody to show what kind of cooperation is going on locally to make positive things happen. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, Mr. Show again. On item number eight, who will be the provider for gasoline purchases? Um, I believe there will be a bid. This is to advertise for bid. This is the Job and Family Services um, annual bid. They put this out bid for $250,000 worth of gasoline per year from May 2020 through April 30th, um, 2021. If the press remembers, they always do those gas cards for um, SNAP and, and TANF recipients uh, in our local uh, Job and Family Services Department, and that is to help people that are uh, perhaps starting a new job. Uh, they don't have the funding initially to drive back and forth to work. So they give them gas cards to help them out. That's all state funding. 
doesn't come out of the general fund. So that's a advertised for bid. So there isn't, I'm sure this isn't, well, it's not the last we'll hear of this. There will be bids that will come in. Uh, once the bid uh, bids are open, there will be someone selected by Job and Family Services, and they'll send it over to us for approval. Um, okay, I, and I appreciate Karen. Karen reached out to me over the weekend in regards to abuse that was going on on the basketball court. You know, we really was hoping against hope probably that there wouldn't be abuse. We, when Portsmouth took their goals down at their parks, we kind of assumed that somebody would eventually figure it out that ETCs were still up. and. And we were hoping that it wouldn't be abused, but it has been. So uh, the goals, the backboards uh, were taken down, the volleyball nets were taken down, and the gates for the tennis courts were locked. Uh, the playground was already shut down, but unfortunately, a few people can ruin it for everybody, and we hate that. We have not closed the park because we still want people people to be able to walk the trails. We have a two mile loop there. There's also places to walk right there within the park itself. We're uh, monitoring that with our park rangers. We have a park manager and park rangers that work the park. They're doing a lot of preventative maintenance right now. Uh, it's a 100 199 acre park, so they can pretty much practice social distancing quite well. But, uh, but we've shut down the restrooms as well at the park. Uh, we hate that we had to do that, but like I said, the actions of a few can ruin it for everybody, and that's unfortunate. Uh, we don't have the ability, nor do we want to burden law enforcement with having to, to uh, patrol that. So um, anyways, that's been done, and as soon as this is over, we'll get everything back to normal. But uh, as for now, we're unfortunately going to have to do that, and uh, it's the right thing to do. Another one from Mark Craig Crash. Mr. Crash, how has the two-step election process, not to mention the last-minute delay, affected your campaign? And also, what would you like to tell the voters, especially with the COVID-19 responsibilities that needed adequate preparation, about the importance of local government? Well, the, uh, you know, time will tell how uh, how this has affected my campaign. I, I still am doing a few things. I send out a few mailers uh, to people. Uh, I have radio time that I've paid for that has uh, not been used at this point. I may go ahead and, and, and put a few ads on uh, and use up whatever I've already paid for. Um, but it's not going to affect uh, what I'm going to do in my campaign from here on. I mean, it's changed the scope of it somewhat, but uh, but people, for the most part, I think, uh, have pretty much made up their mind who they're going to vote for, and I don't I don't see where it's going to make a whole lot of difference in anything that I do from here on. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what was the second part of the question? Um, what I would tell the. What would you like to tell the voters about? Well, I, I would tell you that local government uh, actually is here to serve the people of Scioto County. Every elected office has a purpose to serve the county in one scope or another. If you uh, uh, understand uh, the commissioner's office, we are considered part-time employees, but many times we put in a lot more hours than what, uh, what we would on a regular job. Uh, a lot of our conferences and things that we go to uh, run through the weekends many times. And so uh, in a lot of meetings that we attend from time to time or after hours. And so we, we don't have a particular work schedule, but uh, we do have an unusual, <coughs> excuse me, we have an unusual position in that we have to attend a lot of meetings after hours and a lot of the things that we do that are necessary in the interest of the county are done away from the county. I mean, you can't 
you can't get elected commissioner and expect to sit down in a basement and and uh, work every day of uh, of your uh, tour and and uh, do that in an office. You've got to get out and about. You've got to meet people. You've got to make contacts at the state level. You've got to make contacts at the national level. So local government, as far as the commissioners is concerned, is, is very important. And it's also very important that the, the commissioners uh, keep the county in a good position financially so that we can do a lot of the things that we do and a lot of the things we've been able to do since we got to where we are now. Uh, all of your other offices basically provide a service. I think uh, a lot of your real estate people and your attorneys use the recorder's office and the clerk of courts. Uh, people that pay their taxes have business with the auditor's office and the treasurer's office. Uh, uh, and all of those offices are, are there uh, to uh, serve people and, and they're all eager to do that. So, uh, in my opinion, I don't know where the world would be if they didn't have local government because that's your first uh, um, and most convenient place where you can make contacts with the rest of uh, state government because we are, in fact, an arm of state government and we're kind of your representatives here locally and your state reps and your uh, state senators are your representatives, your voice at the state level. And we have a very good uh, relationship as commissioners with uh, some of our state officials and we try to maintain that contact and we do that through like the County Commissioners Association and also through uh, the National Association of County Officials. And, and both, the, both of those organizations, I'm on the uh, Board of Directors on the County Commissioners Association. I'm also on the Standing Committee of the Community Economic Development and Workforce Development uh, uh, Steering Committee at the national level. And with, that's where we get a lot of our uh, grant money and stuff that we use for projects here locally. So it, everything that we do, I, I know uh, when you get elected as commissioner, there's a learning curve. You spend a lot of time figuring out what you can do and what's in the best interest of the county. And over the last, well, the last 16 years, I've, I've made a lot of contacts, both locally and at the state and the national level. And I, I think that's been beneficial to Scioto County. I know uh, Brian and Kathy, uh, during their time here, have been doing the same thing and, and uh, making their contacts with people and, and doing what they can to make Scioto County better. And I believe we've all worked very well together to make that happen. Okay. Great. We need to, uh, we're going to keep our answers short from here on out, and we'll take a few more questions. We've got to get our health commissioners back <laughs> to the office, and I know Larry's busy uh, at EMA, so we're going we're gonna to do our best to try to uh, move along here quickly so we can get Ask everybody. Ask the um, questions that might pertain to them first, and then we would come Yeah, back. if you could. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Larry? As I uh, mentioned before, uh, the, uh, the Southern Ohio Correctional Facility is on our local emergency planning committee. Uh, there's already been contact about uh, places of isolating prisoners if they uh, do uh, have an outbreak at SOCF. Uh, uh, also, uh, of course, uh, not only inmates are uh, important factor, but uh, the people that work there, uh, very important uh, that we keep them healthy. Uh, so far, there's been no reported uh, cases uh, of the COVID-19 at uh, Lucasville, but uh, plans are already in place um, in case something should happen to isolate those people within the facility and uh, try to minimize the, the spread. Very good. Okay. Is that it? Can I Great. say one more thing? Yes, sir, Mr. absolutely. I, I would just like to publicly, the uh, Scioto County Emergency Management would like to thank our media partners uh, for pushing out all the information that we have uh, given them. 
They're vital to uh, getting the, the safety of the public out there, the information that can help, and uh, we really appreciate the job they do. Great. Thank you. Larry. Thank you. Yes, um, I know that if you watch the governor's press conference, they give the numbers, right. and those are updated every day. The, these, we put them on Facebook, mm -hmm. our face page. Um, <clears throat> but um, those are updated every day and then like these numbers that we have now are from yesterday and they'll be updated again at two, today at two o'clock okay yes yes are there any other um confirmed cases of COVID in Scioto county? in Scioto county we still just have one case um i understand that uh, through the testing process uh, there has actually been five positives that go through sms ocs testing labs uh, but uh, those are from adams county ross county uh, pike county and the only one has been confirmed from Scioto County. So right. the, uh, and maybe Belinda could speak to this, but uh, when someone uh, has an infectious disease, it's reported by that county uh, <laughs> that they are resident in. They may have uh, contracted it in a different county or, or uh, you know, been tested in a different county, but uh, Belinda, maybe that's uh, you, the health commissioner that shows here. the regional aspect of right. what Southern Ohio Medical Center really does. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, go right ahead. Right Great. Ahead. And I think this is important. I know one of the questions that the public is asking, and uh, we talked about this earlier, was, you know, what is the criteria? We know there's a shortage of testing. If you would just speak a little bit about that, because I think a lot of people are thinking um, that that is a something like we're just not getting the test because we're down here it's really a statewide issue it's not just us but we are testing but go go right ahead although there's a shortage of tests right now we have enough test kits to test the people that we're getting so the way this happens is every county has an epidemiologist some people share we share the city Scioto County and Lawrence County share one person as an epidemiologist. So when a lab, <clears throat> excuse me, a lab gets a positive test result, they contact that epidemiologist. And then the epidemiologist has to contact Ohio Department of Health, get a number, and then depending on if it's in their jurisdiction or another county. So for example, Molly, who's our epidemiologist, if she gets one for Lawrence, Pike, wherever, it goes to that county right then. And then that epidemiologist takes over. They do the, the notification, they start contact tracing. Um, same thing happens with Scioto or Lawrence. We, the city, deal with city cases and Dr. Martin and his team deal with county cases. And um, right now, SOMC, this doesn't um, include KDMC, but SOMC has done 389 tests, and we have received 369 of those results. Oh, wow, okay. Um, they immediately call positives to the epidemiologist. They will fax negatives to our director of nursing because we're in joint command right now with sure. the county. So we're dealing with that because we have more staff. So right now, SOMC only has about 20 tests out of there as of last night, now whatever they've done today. Now to get tested, the CDC has set up the criteria. Right. SOMC, the health departments have no control over that. So there's three main questions. Now, in the beginning, the first question was, have you traveled? Well now, well, we know this is community contact, so that's irrelevant. So now they will ask, do you have a fever? And then they give a number. Um, and then they'll want to know if you have developed an unusual cough. I mean, this is Southern Ohio. This Allergy. time of year, we all have a cough. Allergies. Just about everyone. <laughs> yeah. But do you have a different cough, more severe? And have you had direct exposure to someone who has tested positive? So you have to meet that criteria in order to be tested. Because the, the qualifications or the um, standard right now is, even if I've been exposed to a person who's tested positive, I don't immediately get tested. I monitor my symptoms. If I meet the aforementioned criteria, then I get tested. So SOMC has done a great job of getting this set up quickly. Um, there is an issue of getting test results back in a timely manner. That's not the hospital's control. They're sending it out to their lab. Um, 
and it it has taken a while but um, they've tried to get contracts with other facilities and, and everybody in the state is doing that too so under the new guidelines under the yes, director saying under the director's new they're order. supposed to go to facilities that are testing that are not that are, that testing, are on site. Uh, testing on site testing on site yes okay so and there are has only, that helped um, Annie? not really for no. us because we can't get into those sites um, and again that would be something you'd want to speak to somebody at SOMC about okay. but I know they were working on this even before the governor signed the order to try and get these results back quicker yeah because we've heard about like almost two weeks 10 to 13 days 10 to 13 been, days which is but they're really coming back quicker now they are coming, they back, quicker coming now. back quicker now they, and I they've think ramped because, up capacity well I think because the governor's order freed up those private labs a little bit mm -hmm. so then we are able to get ours in there and get them tested more quickly I, I have a daughter who works for UC down in Cincinnati and they are right in the middle of this she's mm -hmm. a respiratory therapist mm -hmm. And um, she made the comment that because UC is now testing on site, their response time is now one day. So that process has saved them so much time and PPE, personal protective equipment, yes. because once they know a patient is not COVID, then they totally, the, 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 the regime t changes on how you take care of that patient. The, the amount of PPE is not required with a non-COVID patient as opposed to a COVID patient, and it saves the PPE for other patients mm -hmm. at that point because, for COVID patients, because um, they know they don't need that protection as much. So as soon as they can get that stood up across the state and across the nation for that matter, we will probably see a, a, a significant increase in available PPE. Uh, for everybody if we can get to that place what people need to keep in mind is what the governor and dr adkin has said all along we need to treat every person mm -hmm. right beside us as if they are a positive because we don't know um somc has been set up for what two weeks now and they've tested 389 people that's just a it's a lot of tests it's a lot of tests but according to the population it's just it's not even a one percent of the You're population right. mm -hmm. so we need to just treat everyone as if they're a positive to stop the spread of this virus do, do you feel uh, i mean I, I guess the silver lining to that is is we have a population in this county depending on what numbers you look at anywhere between 75 and 78 thousand people um the fact that you know, of course we have sick people every day no doubt but it doesn't seem like we've had the number of sick people that we could have had, especially during this time of year. Uh, we had a mild winter, flu um, had a major impact on our area as well. We had high flu numbers, but it seems like we're not seeing the number of severe cases recently, um, which is no reason to let our guard down at all. Um, but I guess in a way it's a blessing that we're not, the hospital isn't ran, overran with major respiratory issues right now. Yes, and um, I think the social distancing, distancing has contributed to that. Um, you know, you, you hesitate to voice something out loud because you don't want to jinx it. But this has probably helped bring down the flu spread also. Mm -hmm. So The schools, having the schools closed. Absolutely. So yeah. we're pessimistic or optimistic that if we get through these next two weeks, we'll be on the downside of it. Yeah. Well, well, trending is starting to show at yes. the state level. But again, we've definitely flattened that curve. We can't let our guard down. Absolutely. The sooner, the more we do, the sooner we'll get past this. And that's that's one thing that we're concerned about with the nice weather, um, the fact that we haven't had a lot of positives. People will think, okay, we can get back to normal, and then is when the surge will hit. Yes. So it's personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. And, and discipline. Personal discipline of making sure that yes. we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Uh, a couple more did come through. Uh, one from Mark Craycraft. Last week, Dr. Mark stated they had done 390 tests. Now we're hearing 389. Have there, not, have there been no tests in the past week? Um, um, 
I don't know. I can't speak to Dr. Martin. Um, he I, has left, by the way. Yes. He had to go. Um, I <clears throat> called SLMC last night preparing for this meeting and spoke with um, Angie Hodge, Dr. Hodge, and that's the number that she gave me. Um, his numbers, and I don't want to speak for him either, may have included KDMC. I don't know if there's yes, testing his numbers going on there as well. Yes, could have included KDMC because mine do not, not, mine are just specific to SOS. That may be the reason for the discrepancy, but he's And, and he's it probably gone. is because, again, it goes back to the reporting to the county issue. Um, any hospital or entity outside of Scioto County would report to the county health department instead of the city. Okay. And is that considered, KDMC considered their corporate? It comes from Ashland. It comes so from they Ashland. Would. Okay. So that may be, that may be why. Okay. And that may include Adina. Um, you know, any health department outside of Scioto County would report to the county. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I think this one's directed more for you guys again. Uh, Rose Mowry, what about those businesses that are not adhering to safety orders? For example, no social distancing. Well, again, with businesses, uh, we would hope that they would take their personal responsibility for their employ employees um, to make masks available, gloves available, um, and to monitor the, the safe distance uh, on the work site. I know of several companies that have had to make changes in how they do their work in order to get the employees separated and to have the social distancing. Uh, it, it really is a situation where I've received multiple calls. I call the health department. Uh, Belinda, you want to comment on that? Uh, we've called the health departments. We let them know that really it's something that the health department needs to handle on an individual basis. Go right ahead. And we have. Um, we've visited some businesses just to make sure um, so far I have not found a business that's not complying. Um, we can't visit every business, but if we get enough complaints, we do. Um, at some point, we refer them to the Attorney General's office. So that's, that's our process. Okay. okay. We'll start with a phone call, then a visit, and then turn it over to the Attorney General's office. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Okay, great. Well, we, we really hope um, by bringing all the powers to be here and, and, and bring really the, the most knowledgeable people on what's going on right now into the room that we have uh, hopefully communicated in, a, in a, a more meaningful way. We're doing our best to get information out. Uh, Scioto EMA, Portsmouth City Health Department, Scioto County Health Department, the Scioto, Scioto County Commissioner's page, um, there, there's, of course, Governor Mike DeWine, his page, the High Department of Health. These are all pages that can be found on Facebook that you can go on to to find information. Thank you Thank all you. very much. They need to get back. But um, we, we really um, urge citizens to get on there, read, get educated, um, know what's being said, and to watch the news and to stay on top of what's going on. And, uh, and together we will get through this. Okay. Is there anything else? All right. No, just if you want to stay up to date, uh, you know, every day, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, I think West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, and the President of the United States uh, spend about an hour trying to give everybody the most up to date uh, uh, information nationwide. So I strongly encourage people if you're if if you have the time to uh, try and keep up with what's happening. Well, the same way that, that most people are already is, is with your national news. And, uh, uh, you know, anything that we find uh, here locally, uh, we will share. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we'll try to share that information. But we, we get the same, we get pretty much the same information that everybody else does. And for the most part, uh, if you want to get get it right direct from the horse's mouth, you know, there's some very thorough, thorough information that comes out. I think it's uh, 2, 3, 5 o'clock uh, every day. Yeah, 
So there's about three or four hours of uh, news about this every day that you can watch. And then at 11 o'clock news at night, uh, usually the local news stations goes over uh, some of the things that's going on as well. So. We're doing the best we can. Um, we're, we're communicating uh, as quickly as we can. And I think, again, we'll, we'll get through this. Kathy, you have? Uh, the only other thing was uh, before the um, social distancing, um, reporters from the various uh, news organizations would be here from time to time. Some are here every week. And um, with with this, um, I don't think we heard any questions from the Times today, but what they will do is they'll listen to this uh, at, when they can, and then that's how they'll put the information in the paper. So they're, you know, they're, even though we're not reaching out to them, they are part of this. So the, the information gets out there um, anyway. We literally have not. hundreds of people that are watching, probably already have viewed this um, now. I don't know what we're up to, Brian, you probably know. But uh, I guarantee you the news organizations, local news organizations are watching. We know, mm -hmm. we know of two for sure that have been watching today. And, um, and then uh, you mentioned the Daily Times. And they will, no doubt, no doubt WNXT, the radio stations yes. are doing the same thing. So uh, we're doing our best to make sure that we keep the information fresh. And, and factual and, and out there, and uh, we'll continue to do so. And by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to call. Uh, we are on a skeleton crew here at the commissioner's office, and uh, but if you have a, a, a major question, something that's very much an emergency or something you feel like we need to know about, uh, feel free to call and, and they'll get the message to us. Reach out to us via Facebook. All three of us have Facebook pages. Um, you can private message us there, and, uh, and we'll get back to you. We, we, we want to be able to make ourselves accessible during this time, especially when there's so many questions and so many concerns, and we want to make sure that we're accessible. So with that, we, we good? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Patrick. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Thank you so much, and God bless you.